Welcome back to Waters Ironworks, continuing our journey through the Abana National Curriculum. We're taking a look at 1.7. This is all about leaves, uh, and those leaves are really uh, to demonstrate your understanding of how a hammer moves steel. Um, one very popular way to kind of get an experience with that, understand how hammers are gonna move steel, uh, in a way that doesn't require any heat is to use some clay. So I've got a piece of clay here. Uh, for this section, we are supposed to make sure we understand how the face of a hammer moves steel, how the peen of a hammer moves steel. Uh, I'm gonna toss in a rounded, rounding hammer and then also a ball peen hammer. The basic idea we have when we're thinking about how steel is going to move from different types of hammers or different shaped objects. Um, Mark Asprey uh, in his book talks about the cow patty uh, theory of blacksmithing. I think it is kind of a great way to think about it, right? If you've got a great big cow patty and you take that patty and you drop a board onto it, a nice wide flat board, that's the equivalent of a flat faced hammer here. It's gonna push that material out in all directions. When we do that on the clay, we see that, right? It is making it longer and it's making it wider. It's spreading that material out evenly across the face of the hammer there. If we take, instead of a broad face of a hammer and we use the peen of the hammer, this is like dropping a board in the cow patty. Very little is going to go along the length of the board. Almost all of it is going to go out to the sides. And we can see that. Right, we're growing a lot more lengthwise than we are widthwise with those peening blows. If we take something like the ball of the hammer, this is like throwing a bowl into a cow patty. It's gonna send a lot of material out everywhere. Similar to what the face of the hammer does, but because all of the energy is concentrated here, it's gonna make a much bigger divot um, in the material instead of this wide surface. So, we'll take a look at that. You can see comparing that to this, um, it's still pushing material out in all directions, but it's really moving the material in the center a lot more than it does on the um, face of the hammer here where everything kind of moves out a little bit slower. And finally, if we take a look at a rounding hammer, let's flatten this out a little bit here. And I'll show you why people kind of like rounding hammers so much. This one's got a flat face on one side. Uh, actually, this one's got pretty round faces on both sides. A rounding hammer straight on looks very similar to what we got with the fat, flat face of the hammer. Everything's moving out evenly. Um, it's a little gentler. The sides are certainly gentler than we get with the face of the hammer. With a rounding hammer though, I can take it and I can rotate it so it's on its corner and do that. And this all of a sudden starts looking a lot like the cross pin on the hammer. I can do it, you know, rotate it the other direction, start spreading out material preferentially to these sides. So these rounding hammers, um, super popular blacksmithing hammers, and it is because they offer a lot of flexibility. They're a little more aggressive than a hammer like this, so they'll move material a little bit faster. And by rotating it onto its sides, you're able to act kind of like a cross peen or a straight peen um, as you move that material around. Um, this is really useful when we're doing something like making a leaf, where we really want to be able to drag the material in different directions without having to grow and grab a bunch of hammers. We will use this rounding hammer um, in order to shape that leaf as we want it. Let's talk before we get the steel hot a little bit about what we need to do to it uh, and the skills that we're gonna use. So we're gonna start, uh, I've got a half inch uh, round bar or square bar. 
um, and we're going to put our leaf here on the end of it. The first couple things I'm going to need to do are put a point. So I want a nice sharp point here. That way when I spread this material out, my leaf also has a point. Um, I then don't want my leaf to be forever long. So we've got to come in here and bring that down and this will become our stem right here. So we'll do this off the far side of the anvil, neck that down and that'll leave us with a lump of material here on the end um, that will turn into the leaf. And we'll do that first by coming in, uh, taking off a little bit of this corner so we don't get sh cold chunks. And then we'll flatten this and we'll spread it with, um, with the different faces of the rounding hammer, which will be emulating the peen on a hammer. So let's get it hot, put that point on it, neck it in, and then we'll worry about the rest of this. That looks pretty good for our points. Again, we want to keep it pretty tight here at the end. Um, if we let this point get long, we wind up with a really long leaf. And I'd like one that's a little uh, stubbier than that. There certainly are long leaves, so it's an aesthetic choice in how you want to do that. So we're going to come to the far side of the anvil. Some half on, half off hammer blows, right? My hammer blows are hanging over the edge. And we're just going to neck this down back and forth on two sides. And that's what we're looking for, something like that right there. The next thing I'm going to do is draw out this uh, stem a ways um, to give myself some clearance. Um, and also do it before I thin this out where it's going to get real easy to burn. So let's uh, draw this out a little ways. If we'd like to speed this up, we can bring it over the horn of the anvil. Let's get that hot again. All right. When we cut this off, we'll put a little bit more of a taper on the stem um, and we'll round it up and everything at that point. But I think we're in good shape now. The next thing we've got to do, if we want to avoid cold shunts, um, cracks or anything like that, is we're going to come in, right? We're going to hammer this material down. As we saw with the clay, when we hammer it down, it's going to spread out in all directions. One of those directions being backwards here. As we then flatten things, we're going to have a, a overhang that will get flattened down and be a crack. So we need to give some room for that material to grow without creating that overhang and eventual crack. 
The way we're going to do that is we're going to come in here, give it a couple blows from the back, drive this material down um, and away from the hang so that it's got a little bit of a slope there. I'm making sure that this is up off the anvil, um, just hammering down. Hopefully you can see that here, but we've knocked this corner back flat. We've moved the material up into the body here so that as we start spreading this now, we're not going to have a chance of that coming back and hanging over. As we look at this, we're ready to start forming our leaf. And we've done a lot to set ourselves up for success, right? We know we need something leaf shaped, so we've given ourselves less material up here on the front um, so that we get a point. We've got more material on the back so we can have a nice wide back end to our leaf. If we wanted, we could come in and we could knock these corners in as well and have a leaf that tapers back a little bit more. This one will be pretty wide at the back. Uh, at this point, it's pretty much flattening it out and then using the sides of the rounding hammer to really push some of that material out towards the back and the sides. Uh, we don't want to get a whole lot longer. We mostly want to go sideways. All right, we're up on the diamond. These initial blows are going to be straight down, giving us a nice wide base. And now I'm going to rotate the hammer so that I'm hammering with the edges and start dragging it towards me. And then I'm going to push it away from me. Dragging it towards me some more, trying to keep it all nice and even here. You can see this, this hammer is really coming in on those edges so that we can spread that material nicely. Let's get it hot again. Had a bad blow there right on the edge, knocked a little bit in. Clean that up. Right. Drag it out a little bit more here, push it away from myself. Do a little bit of work up here on the front. Starting to get a pretty nice looking leaf there. I'd like to bring this back corner out a little bit more, so let's get it hot. We'll give it a few blows just with kind of the bottom, you know, point on this round, which will work kind of like a ball peen hammer and should let us push some material out into that corner. Yeah, and you can see how that's pulling that material out, evening it up a little bit more. And a couple hammers here along the sides and I think that's looking pretty reasonably leaf shape but you know it doesn't have any veins or anything like that in it there are a lot of different ways um, that you can put veining in the leaves uh, I'm actually going to show you guys the way the person who taught me originally um, always liked to do them and that's just running a chisel down the middle and then some chisels out on each of the edges. Um, makes a pretty reasonable looking leaf. So for this style, just gonna give it a blow with a wide chisel here. Just work our way down the center of the leaf. Creating a vein. There are a lot of different ways to do the decoration on leaves. Um, I've got a little bit of nostalgia for this style because, uh, like I said, the guy who taught me, uh, Jesse Stamper, um, this was his favorite way of doing leaves. So it always reminds me of him when I make them this way.
All right, now that we've got one side done, we're gonna come in and just line it up on the other side. You know, try and make them look uh, reasonably in line. I was a little off on that one there. Want to be careful going over your chisel marks. You got a little bit of a double mark there. That's okay. So we've got a leaf. It's starting to look a little more leaf like with the veining in there, but it's still pretty flat. Um, if we had a diverging V tool, um, which is something that sits in the hardy, has two legs that spread out like that, we could put it in there and shape it. I don't have one with me though, so instead we will use the step of the amble and a um, cross pin on a hammer. So let's get this hot. We'll do a little bit more shaping to it. Rest it up on the step. Give it some hammer blows along the middle. That'll start curling it. We can come to the edge of the anvil, tip that down. If you want, you can come in, give it a couple blows along the sides, put a little bit more texture in there. Do some here over the... Yeah. That's looking pretty reasonable. It's not the uh, best leaf in the world. I don't make a ton of leaves. But we spread the material the way we want to. We gave it some veining, a little bit of texture in there. Um, let's cut this off, finish drawing it out, make a little loop, and uh, have a little fob uh, with a leaf on the end. We never like to throw hot steel around the shop, so we will cut most of the way through this, grab a pair of tongs, finish breaking it off like that. Back into the fire so we can finish drying this out. Put our points on the end. this out nice and long and thin here Get it hot one more time, we'll go in and we'll round this up. looks reasonably round. Let's take one more heat on it. We'll put a little safety curl uh, and then loop this around. There 
very similar process to the S-hooks that we made last week. I would like this to be laying flat uh, and be shaped a little differently, so we're going to heat it up one more time. I'm going to grab some scrolling tongs and bend it around. So with the scrolling tongs, I'll just bend that, do a little bit more shaping, maybe have this come out a little bit straighter. It's looking pretty good. Let me clean this up real quick and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, so here's the finished leaf. Uh, we've got our veining cut into it. Um, other ways to do that are you could use a wider chisel and get uh, leave the leaf thicker and get kind of deeper indentations for it. You can also use the cross peen of the hammer and hammer all along the edges and put some veining in that way. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of different ways. Like I said though, this one's got some nostalgia for me. If it does look a little bit different than what you saw a second ago, I realized that I'd gotten that tip too hot. Um, you know, and I hate burning stuff, so I cut it off, uh, reforged it, cleaned it up. But yeah, not too bad. We've got a forged leaf. Uh, that concludes 1.7, right? This is um, really about how the hammer spreads material, the different types of hammers spread material in different directions. And can you control uh, through both the setup and then your hammer work, moving the metal where you want it to go. Uh, I did a, uh, a very low key style leaf with just cut in veins. Uh, there are probably as many different leaves as there are blacksmiths out there. There are a lot of ways to make these things. Um, so go out, have fun, watch other YouTube videos, um, and I'm sure you'll see people making some really amazing leaves. For this project, our focus was really about those hammer skills, showing that we know how to move the metal um, and can get the leaf to form the shape that we want. Um, so not probably the leaf I would traditionally make, um, but it is an excellent project if you're trying to work on those skills and really controlling how that metal moves while you're working it. Hopefully uh, this very long video on what seems like a simple topic was interesting and we'll be taking a look at 1.8 next, which is, I believe, making a uh, round punch. And we'll talk about, uh, I think in a lot more detail, about heat treating and all of that than most people are probably gonna be interested in. Uh, so we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me and uh, have a great day.